Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds out his wife is pregnant by another man. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. I find out that my wife has been sleeping with another man, and I'm beyond pissed. I had a feeling about the two and did a bunch of sleuthing. Caught her red-handed, coming out of his place. Mic drop. She admitted the baby was his and not mine, so we had a prenatal paternity test done. It came out that the baby was not mine. I can't be gone fast enough from this mess. She's begging me to let her have a second chance and raise the baby as a happy family. The baby's biological father is obviously nowhere to be found. I guess Chad was the fun and exciting person who just wanted to get it in, but not want to be worn down by the aftermath. Between the two, I make the ideal father, so it could be that she wants me to raise the child instead of Chad, who's a 34-year-old man who's been unemployed for more years than he was employed. I, on the other hand, earn more than the average income, have a car, and a house in my name. I have refused to have anything to do with the baby, and am planning to divorce her. She has gathered the troops, aka her family, and friends to rally support around her. Many of her friends and family, including a few of mine, are pressuring me not to let the baby ruin our perfect relationship. Some people are saying that the baby was innocent and that I should raise it as my own and that mature men handle more pain. I guess raising your wife's affair is such a mature thing. They are trying to shift the blame to me for not giving my wife the attention she needed and that's why she had to resort to other means. I work quite a lot since I'm the only source of income, so I guess it's my fault too that I had to work hard to compensate her lack of income. She is currently in a state of despair and pleading me not to divorce her. She believes that the child is innocent and shouldn't be raised in a dysfunctional family and wants me to empathize with her for having to raise a child without any financial support. She claims that she only cheated on me once and won't do it again, so to just give her another chance. Even if she cheated on me once, what's to stop her from cheating again? Her parents are blaming me for getting her so worked up because it's not good for the baby. Her mom came by my place yesterday and tried to reprimand me for my being so neglectful of my pregnant wife. I told her off and told her to find the baby daddy to yap about. She looked so offended like I had just slapped her. I don't understand how these people's brains work. Seems like the whole family is suffering from some maltuning in their wiring. So, that's where things are. Advice? Update. We attended mediation today. Her parents had gotten her a lawyer. Her dad implied that they won't make it easy for me to wriggle out of my responsibility. They more or less tried to hog the room and wouldn't let my lawyer get a word out. Kept repeating how they'd not let me abandon their daughter. So much that our lawyers had to throw them out. My lawyer says I'm safe regardless whether the divorce finalizes before the baby is born or not. But he wants to speed things up since there's no point in delaying. We have filed for a court-ordered paternity test to make the paternity official, which is my safety blanket to avoid the child support for the next 18 years. My house is safe, but he thinks I should give up my car as an upfront settlement and get out of paying alimony. Whatever, I'm fine with it. It's not expensive and I had wanted to upgrade anyway. As for my soon-to-be ex, well, she's lost her henchman. At least, they've stopped harassing me to take her back and raise the baby. I had her move out for a few days after my first post, and she's been living with her parents for the past month. She keeps sending me texts daily. I haven't blocked her latest number. It's pointless since she keeps buying new sims, apparently. Her texts range from pleas to take her back to threats to make me pay child support. I'm saving the texts, just in case. All in all, I'm fine. I feel a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Not exactly how I thought I'd feel about losing my partner of seven years. But I'm okay, and I'm focusing on myself for the moment. Story 2 I was still at my work location when my feeling that my wife was cheating was becoming more evident, especially with the growing evidence that my friend was accumulating. I contacted my brother and told him about my situation, and he said that I could use his cabin if the need arises. In fact, he told me to go to the cabin and he'll meet me there to go over the situation. 
He has a cabin in the San Juan Islands off the coast of Washington that he won from his divorce settlement a few years ago. I made it to the cabin, where my brother was already there along with two of my best friends. One friend is also divorced and the other is a divorce slash custody attorney in my city. I called my wife and told her that my work was extended for a week and I told her the date I would be home. She said that she was disappointed but totally understood. I'm sure his was the shrew. So after several days of crying, yelling, drinking a lot of beer and jumping into Puget Sound to clear the head, I have a plan. It might be the right plan or it may just blow up in my face. I have to let everyone know that I am loyal to a fault and will support anyone close to me until they do something that undermines my trust. I apply this philosophy to my family, friends, and spouse. I have supported all her desires, including college, her family, and their issues to her work. No, I am not a perfect person by far, but when it comes to commitment, especially in my marriage, I assume each partner should adhere to those commitments. She never mentioned being unhappy with me, and we do a lot of things together, including both of our hobbies. We have the same dreams and desires within our marriage, so this situation is from left field. Breaking her commitment to me by cheating, along with growing evidence of cheating with a co-worker, are the cornerstones for my decisions. Just a side note. Yes, she cheated with a co-worker. I wish her cheating was more dramatic instead of run-of-the-mill cheating with the co-worker. How expected. Just a random thought. So back to the plan. I arrived home late on the date I told her I would. She was asleep? She looked asleep when I came in with her computer on the bed, which was turned on. When I came out of the bathroom, the computer was gone. Spooky. I got up earlier than she did and went to work. When she came down to the kitchen, she saw that I left a stack of printed emails, four inches tall, from her correspondence with the co-worker, with my wedding ring on top. Yes, it was an immature action, but it felt good to go down to that level, a little. As expected, I received a phone call. The gist of it. Her. What is this? Me. What? Her. What is with the email and ring? Me. Did you read your emails? Her. Yes, what does this mean? Me. This is my decision on your cheating. Her. Does this mean you're going to leave me? Me. This is the road I'm taking. Her. Good. Fuck you. Then came the proverbial hang-up. Knowing her, she probably wished she was on a landline so she would have the satisfaction of slamming the receiver down. But she didn't. Bummer. An hour later, she calls back. Her. I'm sorry for everything. Can we talk about this when you get home? Me. For the foreseeable future, I will be staying somewhere else. Her. How can we work it out if I never see you? Me. It's for the best right now. Her. Asshole. But before she could do another hang up, I mentioned to her that I have copies of all the emails and pictures of her infidelity that are ready to be mailed to her parents and work if she does decide to go ballistic while she's still upset. Fuck you. Then the hang up. So during the time between posts, I have an outstanding attorney, best friend, a good support base, and the time I need to make the right decision for me and my well-being. I am living with a friend which, unfortunately, is close to my house, so I can see her comings and goings if I wish. Still, it is kind of creepy. I have gone 180 not only with her, but with her family as well. Their philosophy regarding committed marriages is subject at best. Both divorced twice. Both cheated. My attorney is handling the division of assets and the rest of the legal shit that makes attorneys a lot of money. I kid about him being an attorney, but he does make a lot of money. Anyway, this is what I predict I will need to deal with in the near future. The reconciliation call, her parents call, her sister's calls, her friends call, and then appearing at my job. She has not done anything needed for a restraining order. In fact, she is the most good-natured person I've ever met. Her actions have just gutted me, especially when her actions came from out of the blue. I'm confused where our marriage went wrong. I mean, we have ups and downs like everyone, 
but we always prided ourselves on working through these problems. We have sex three to four times per week. We have long talks and have a good social life. I am just dumbfounded. I am currently in therapy dealing with all sorts of topics regarding my marriage along with my personal well-being. Anyway, she is going to be served at her job next week. Just happened. I guess she deducted where I was living based on the fact my best friend lives in our city and is a divorce attorney. She just came to the door and my friend answered. He told her I was unable to come to the door and she breaks down into hysterical crying saying that this is Thanksgiving and her family was asking where I was. They know I'm in town because I had to get some mail from them. I think this is all coming into focus for her and it is not what she wants to see. Time will tell. Anyway, there's more to tell in a later post. Thanks to all, GFS. You will heal, but you still need some time to let it all sink in. This entire experience will have a lasting impact on you. Many people lash out in anger, cry and beg, and for months or even years, they try to reconcile and put so much work in when their partner puts none in. You are emotionally intelligent, even if your life is completely changed. Even if you had a great relationship and handled the breakup well, you should still give yourself some time to mourn. Then, when you're done grieving, make sure you don't bring any of the baggage from the breakup into your next relationship. When you're feeling better, try to do something new, like hiking or learning a new language. Good luck. Now for some comments. Expect a whole lot of waffling on her end. One week she begs forgiveness, and the next it's all out war. Habits are hard to break, and even a crappy marriage provides a sense of security and routine that is a jolt to the system when it implodes. As the other dude's life implodes and their affair craters, I wouldn't be surprised to see her promising the son to try and hang on to the familiar relationship she had with you. The depth of her lying and screwing a dude in your own home speaks to a diabolical level of fraud, detachment, and crassness that's hard to overcome. Was nothing sacred to her that she could let another man taint the marital bed that she shared with you? Same goes for him. What man thinks it's cool to screw in another guy's home? Wow, good luck. I don't know how I'd handle that. I was ready to forgive my ex, but she wouldn't let me. I forced myself to move out and she was still seeing the AP. About two months later into the process, she asked to get back together because she finally realized her mistake. No remorse, mind you, just that she'd made a mistake like picking out the wrong kind of cheese for taco night. Damn it saved me. Because of distance and time, I was ready. Always a tough call when the spouse is all waterworks. Good job following your plan.